Hello Bucks fans, welcome back to Real Bucks Talk. In today's video, I want to talk about the Buccaneers offseason and obviously their goals of adding depth. Uh, Jason Light spoke about it earlier this offseason being a big key heading um, into the 24 season and just finding ways to add depth. And I think they have done it. I think they have done a great job of adding veteran depth and also you know, youth and getting better overall as a team. Now, again, we have to see it, but, you know, from looking at it, you know, high, high level view, I, I think the Buccaneers have done a great job of adding more depth to this roster and making it more competitive, making it more physical, smarter football team. Uh, and it should be a lot of fun to see how it plays out, but let's go back to what Jason Light said. And I think this, speaks volumes about just foreshadowing an offseason plan that he has put together. And it really has been pretty smooth as far as just what the additions he's been able to make. And that doesn't mean they're done making additions either, even though the, you know, the draft is over and now we head into, you know, kind of the dog days of the off season. But here's Jason light talking about just how depth is the key uh, for this off season, how it's critical uh, to be one of the better teams in the league is having said depth. Teams that win the distance um, and then you go back to the self-scout, what, what do you think were some of the differences or what, what's kind of separating you? Well, it's a lot closer than we thought. And uh, that was that was good to see. That was, you know, it's a sign of a great organization, scouts, coaches, players. So um, I think when you look back to 2020, we had a lot of depth and some veteran depth, some young depth, but we had a lot of depth and I think depth might be the key. So. So there you have it. Depth being the key. And just looking at the depth chart right now for the Buccaneers, I mean, it is a pretty talented roster and also you have experience at depth and you also have some young, you know, new blood in there as well. So I think that is really exciting. Uh, you know, starting with, with the receiver room, obviously you get Mike Evans back, huge addition, huge signing. Um, Chris Godwin, Trey Palmer, you drafted Jalen McMillan in the third round. So you like those top four right there. You still have Devin Tompkins and Rakeem Jarrett. Um, and then some, you know, other guys that could fill in as far as practice squad slash, you know, maybe compete for a roster spot. Um, then you look at the offensive line. I think this is the biggest area of adding depth. Obviously, Tristan Wirfs at left tackle. You've added some guards in, in Bryn Bettison and also Sua Opeta as well. You drafted Elijah Klein in the sixth round to add some solid depth there. Uh, you still have Brandon Walton. You have Robert Hainsey, who could be a potential top backup center or, you know, the starting center. You know, Graham Barton with your first pick. So the investment into the offensive line, into the trenches, I think was really evident. And I think that's very important. Um, but what it does is, I mean, even if Graham Barton is your starting left guard, you have Hainsey at your starting center, you still have good backups and Ben Bredesen and also Sue Opeta. You still have um, Justin Skoll, who showed pretty good as far as being that backup swing tackle. Uh, and then you also have Brandon Walton there too. So a lot of good pieces there. Um, then at the tight end room, uh, you have Kate Otten. You have Payne Durham, who's expected to step up into that number two tight end spot. Devin Culp, they drafted in the seventh round. You still have Coquif on here. And also David Wells and Tanner Tallulah, who they liked a lot during the preseason. Quarterback room you know, remains the same. You still have Baker. You have Kyle Trask, John Woodford, pretty solid there. Um, and then the running back room, I think, has really ramped up with the addition of Bucky Irving in the fourth round pick. And then also Rashad White, you bring back Chase Edmonds and you still have Sean Tucker, who is looking to, you know, make a case for himself as well. So overall offense, I, I like what they're doing and I like the additions of physicality. Obviously, the, the Graham Barton pick, as you see here on the screen, just bringing more physicality smart football to this team, whether he's going to start at left guard or be the starting center. I think he's going to be in the mix there. And you have to be really excited about that first round selection because 
he is going to make us run the football better. And I think that has been the the big emphasis you've seen on offense so far this year is finding ways to be more balanced. And with the additions they've made in, in the offensive line, all those guys know how to run block. And I think that's very important. And just bringing back that mentality of being physical, playing smart and being good as far as, you know, just on the same page. So you have to like it from that aspect. So Graham Barton, Really, really like that selection. But overall, the offense, I think, is ready. And then the biggest addition for the offense is Liam Cohen. I think his experience as an offense coordinator is really going to help this team out. But just overall depth, you really have to like it. And then on defense, you you start off with the defensive line. You got Logan Hall, Vita Vea, Kalijah Kansi as returning as starters. You bring back William Golston and Greg Gaines. So those are two key depth pieces right there off your rotation. Mike Green, I think they liked a lot, you know, from his play early on in the season. You hope he continues to improve and get better. Um, Maybe he can step up. This could be an area where they still add someone as far as defensive line goes. I would like to see that six spot being upgraded if potentially is there. Judge Culpepper, the undrafted free agent they added, he's a name to watch out for and could potentially, you know, make the roster as the sixth defense alignment. So that'll be intriguing. Uh, and then the outside linebacker room, they really, I think, added a lot of good pieces and upgraded here with, um, you know, obviously Yaya Diaby's back. Uh, you lose Shaq Barrett. You have JTS back returning. Anthony Nelson, Chris Braswell, the second round pick, I think is going to come in and help a lot. Randy Gregory. And then you have Jose Ramirez and Marquis Watts. So you have some veteran, you know, veterans added with um, Randy Gregory. And then also, you know, some youth potential with Jose Ramirez and Marquis Watts. And then also Chris Braswell really like those moves. And then in the secondary, they've made a lot of good additions with Bryce Hall, the free agent from the Jets. Really like that move. Tavier Thomas from Houston has a little inside outside versatility. Um, you added Tyke Smith in the third round. I think he's got a great shot at being the nickel uh, corner. And then you have some young guys that are coming up in the system with Christian Izian, who started all of last year and played pretty solid. And then you have Kayvon Merriweather as a backup safety uh, who showed some good things as well. Uh, Josh Hayes and uh, Keenick. Keenan Isaac have some potential there at outside corner. So you look for them to maybe make a a rise. And then, you know, obviously Jordan Whitehead bringing that guy back veteran leader next to Antoine Winfield. I think that is a very underrated move that doesn't get talked about enough, but overall, I think you have to be really excited about the depth across the board for this team. Um, even at inside linebacker, I know that's been a question there, but I like J.J. Russell, Sarasia Dennis, K.J. Britt. Kalen Deloach out of FSU is a guy to look out for as far as undrafted free agents. So overall, I mean, top to bottom, the Buccaneers, I think, have accomplished adding that depth that they were looking for. And it remains to be seen who else they add as we head into the offseason as the roster is fluid and continue to add pieces here and there, but man, you have to be excited about this Buccaneers team heading into 2024. Got a lot of good pieces here um, and a lot to work with. So should be a lot of fun. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to hit that like button, comment down below your thoughts of the Buccaneers depth overall. Where are some positions that you think they should continue to address or add at, you know, let us know. And with that said, until the next one.